Well, I got to sit there in what I would perceive as God's throne room and, and one, be terrified, but also be in complete awe of the God that we serve. I'm thrilled to bring you my guest today. He has an amazing testimony. He was actually dead for a brief amount of time. He is with us, obviously, and he has a beautiful miracle testimony to share and also a message that he got from God himself that is going to bless you today. So Dave Borelli, thank you for coming thanks on the podcast. Me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, can you share a little bit about what your faith walk when you first became a believer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So became a believer at 20 years old. I grew up in a Christian home, so was introduced to the gospel at early age, but I really didn't, you know, the Lord came and saved me in my room randomly, you know, when I was 20. And I knew from there, it was like, you can't just do this halfway. Um, and my dad always tells me that like my greatest strength can also be my greatest weakness because I either, I am all in or I'm all out. And sometimes all in on certain things I shouldn't be all in on. Yeah. Um, but this was unfortunately a good one that I'll be all in with God. And honestly, like when I went all in, I knew I couldn't do it alone. And I, the next day, gave my life to the Lord. I was living in a house with, you know, drug dealer, my older brother who wasn't a believer, another guy who was also involved in all that stuff as well. And I was like, well, I got to figure this out because I can't, like, I'm not going to make it in this environment. Yeah. I remember walking on campus and in college and I was like, well, I'm going to go find a ministry. And I guess that's the best thing to do. And I just picked the first one that was going to be that night and got involved in this ministry and uh, they were great. Discipled hard, I guess you could say. Taught me a ton, ton of stuff that I'm still using this day, how to, how to study the Bible, how to share my faith, a lot of different spiritual disciplines that were great. But I would honestly say my faith with the Lord. So I got handed a lot of tools when I first became a believer on how to be a Christian. And it was great. Because all those things are literally helping me to this day. I get up every morning and I study the Bible. And I study the Bible the way I was taught in those first couple of years when I became a believer about that ministry. But when I got done with college and I got out of that bubble, got into the world where you didn't have 100 college students or any that were following Jesus. And I really started to, my faith in God, my relationship with God started to, one, be challenged and two, take off. Because I realized I had all these tools, but I, I didn't have this deep, understanding of just who God was. I hadn't sat before him and talked to him. And I hadn't listened to him. It was like, go, 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 go. And that was a big thing. That was one thing my dad talked to me about. I was like, Dave, you know, you just been going. Like, how much have you just sat before the Lord? It's like, well, I mean, I would like to think I have, but that was something I had to learn big time. That really, really in the long run helped me now in my ministry, what God's calling me into because, you know, I feel like I know God. I can hear God. I can talk to God like I'm talking to you. Yeah. And those are just things I had to learn. But yeah, so that's kind of my my story when I became a believer. And, you know, God has been, I mean, there's, there's a thousand miracles in my life, honestly. Yeah. Of how I got to this point, to this day. Yeah. To, just to this day that, that I actually woke up and that air entered into my lungs. It's like, well, that's a miracle. Yeah. And, and it's not a mistake. So therefore, there's a purpose yeah. for me to worship God. And it, from that worship, go out and do whatever he calls me to do. So yeah, that's a little bit about it. And my story there. Yeah. So now you are, you're working at Movement Mortgage. You run the gym there mm -hmm. and you also have a ministry. And this event, it sounds like the event that happened in the pool really yeah. catapulted you to a different level. So if you could share a little yeah. bit about yeah. what happened in your experience yeah. with the pool. Yeah. So, so attending, I worked for Rise Up Gym slash Movement Mortgage. Okay. Nobody ever actually knows what I do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have, you know, there's not me. I don't even know if I have a title. But anyways, yeah. So the pool incident definitely catapulted is a good word. Launched me. Launch is the word that God kind of put on me. Um, anyways, the pool incident, I uh, was at a buddy's house. Good friend of mine. Love him to death. My brother was there. One of my brothers. I've, I've got a big family. So one of my brothers were there. I had three of my kids there. He had two of his kids there. And then there's one other friend there as well. Nothing crazy, just hanging out, swimming with the kids. I, I do enjoy being underwater. I, I love the the silence of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can get any more quiet than underwater. 
And it's a beautiful thing because there's a lot of noise in this world. Long story short, I was swimming back and forth. Didn't have this feeling like I was running out of air at all. I actually saw myself get out of the pool and just resume life, you know, mingling with my kids and they're jumping in and out of the pool. And that scene quickly uh, faded. And I found myself, I'll tell the truth because it's like nothing else I can do, right? It's like, it sounds cliche, but I found myself lying in a very white, bright room. I had the deepest sense of peace and satisfaction and contentment. It was so deep that I would have loved just to stay there. The crazy thing is I'm experiencing the deepest level of peace that I've ever experienced. I'm experiencing the deepest level of satisfaction and contentment in this room. And in, on the other side of things, you've got my brother who is attempting, well, before they even attempted CPR, they said I was laying on the bottom of the pool and my buddy's like, oh, is he all right? He's like, yeah, he's just down there or whatever. This is what they told me. I guess I don't really know how long I was down there, right? You know, I was, I was out. So I go off their timing. My buddy who's, who loves a mess with me comes down to like joke with me, like jump on my back. He said he literally like jumped on my back with his feet like he as if he was like surfing me. I was in like five feet of water. So it's like you stand yeah. in this. And he realized like this joker's not moving. And so when he came down there and kind of rolled me over, it was like, you know, there's no, no nothing, nothing in me. My face is most likely purple. And he's a pretty small guy. So he's trying to, he's attempting to get me up out of the water. <laughs> The funny thing is the next day I had these like ridiculously ridiculous bruises on the back of my hamstrings and they hurt so bad. I'm like, why do my hamstrings hurt so bad? Why are they so bruised up? I was like, oh yeah, we had to like pull you up out of your, by your feet because we couldn't get you up. So, you know, and it, it's funny, but yeah, because yeah, I was laughing, fear. You're laughing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but also my kids are like, oh my goodness. Like, you know, my, I, I suppose you, my niece is telling my son, your dad's dead, your dad's dead. So they're seeing this. It was chaotic, supposedly. And my friend gathered the kids, brought them inside. Then that's when my brother attempted CPR because he's never learned CPR or never took any class or anything like that. And um, supposedly my buddy was like holding my airways open. And again, timing of how long, you know, the, the number of like three minutes, three and a half has been thrown out that they're like doing CPR. Person also adding on the time that I was laying in the bottom of the pool. And so, so it's chaos for them. Yeah. Right. It's chaos. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh my goodness, like, this guy's dead. And me, I'm like, this is amazing. Like this, this is the best thing ever. And all of a sudden, just, you know, heartbeats, wake up and brother's over top of me. And he looks like he's, you know, just ran, you know, his fastest 5k and he's tired. And then my, my buddy is like, you know, oh my gosh, I put his hands in his face in his hands and and the first thing I actually said when I came to, after I felt my heart just beat, explode, which was cool and crazy. You feel your blood like rush through your body, all the tingling over the entire body. Was I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I knew like right then and there that, like, you know, obviously the scene that they just went through was a lot worse than what I just went through. And I hated that. I hated that for them. I hated that for my kids, you know, because my brother and I are close, you know, we're the closest in the family seven kids were 15 months apart so it's like you know he's obviously shaking up my buddy's shaking up the other buddy who's having to like rush the kids inside who doesn't have any kids so he's trying to wrestle with like six or seven kids and i i really i remember i came to threw up probably like 30 seconds later or whatever getting that water up yeah and immediately i went into just dad mode and was like i gotta act normal my kids are there so they came outside and i was like hey what's up guys and, you know Honestly, I don't remember that conversation too much as to what it was or how it went. All I remember was my wife, who works the night shift at the hospital, had to get to work and I was late. So I was like, ah, I got to go. I want I got to go because I want my kids to just kind of be removed from that scene. And two, I want to obviously get home and I want my wife to you know, be late for work. I wasn't really thinking about myself, honestly. I was just like, I got to get back and... I felt fine. Obviously, my lungs were burning, but my body's been through pain in the past. I was like, okay, I'm alive. Like, I'm, you know, like, I'm, sense I'm alive. So I drove home that night real quick. <laughs> okay, we stop for a Yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Just, as a nurse, I feel compelled to say this. Right. Now, I'm not trying to say this to make you feel bad because I personally had a stroke and drove mm. myself to the ER. 
if you have an incident where yeah. your heart stops or you, you should probably die briefly or you have a vision <laughs> change, please do not drive yourself to the hospital. But anyway. With you, three kids as well. So <laughs> there's a lot that went wrong. <laughs> been the mom who had to get to work. So yeah. I respect yeah. that too. Eventually, my wife found out. My brother, I guess, I think the way it worked out, my brother texts her, is, is Dave okay? And then she found out what happened. So she was, she was probably a little, she was a little, little, obviously, are you okay? But also, like, you drove our kids. <laughs> yeah. You know, all sorts of different emotions. Um, so anyways, that night was rough. I mean, it felt like I was breathing out of a straw. It was like, like, I used to have, like, you know, nightmares back in the day when I was real young. Weird stuff. I can't explain them, like what they were. But it was like some of those things started happening. And it was just a very long night, you know, trying to lay in my bed, not really doing that. And I was like, well, you know, if I, if, if things go down, you know, from here, I'll go to the hospital. My dad slept, spent the night that night. So first night was a rough night. I went, it was Sunday the next morning. I went to church the next morning. Obviously at this point, I was like, all right, God, like that was weird. You know, I don't want to just bypass this moment. And, and unless there's, you know, I want to make sure that there's something that you want to speak into me that I'm listening. Um, and so just asking God a lot of questions and, okay, what was that? Why? Sunday night, I went to sleep and I found myself in that white room again. And in that white room was a good buddy of mine that he was in that room and he had actually passed away. Um, cause so I'm like, I, I know in this dream that he has passed away, right? Yeah. So, man, how are you doing? And we connected through working out things like that. We were catching up and then this door to my right in this room opened up and out of this door, I looked out and there was a military group and they were training. I could tell they were training and they were about to go to battle. That was just kind of the impression that I was getting in this dream. And before I could turn around, my buddy kind of gave me one of those like locker room slaps in the butt. He said, hey, buddy, my time's up. Yours isn't. He said, you got to go back out there. And he kind of quoted the verse in Timothy where it talks about fight the good fight, keep the faith, finish the race. And my race wasn't done yet. And so I wake up from that dream and I just clearly heard the Lord say, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to hear from that? And he's just like, get back in the game. There is a battlefield out there. And I'm, I'm convinced that my buddy was in that room because when he did pass, he was in a tough place in his life. He was in a dark place in his life. Only a few knew that. And I remember being in my backyard and I remember sitting on my kid's swing set. I remember it was perfectly. And I just prayed, God, this is before I had this pool incident. I said, God, send me to those dark places. Like, send me there. Send me there. Because... I want to be the tip of the spear that goes in that place and speaks your truth in these places. Because so many people these days are believing lies. They're believing lies that maybe their sin is sowed into them or the enemy has sowed into them or even just the strains of the world has sown into these people and they're believing lies. We all believe lies. I mean, there's we need the gospel every day. We can never move on from it. And so, you know, there's times that lies slip into our lives that we give give time to. And I just remember praying that prayer and it broke me. It broke me. And so he answered that. Before the pool incident, I mean, he was answering that. And then after the pool incident, he reminded me, Dave, get back in the game. Like, you saw your buddy there. You know, he's a believer in Jesus. But he, you know, we all go through, you know, dark times and things like that. But you don't want to see your brother in Christ suffer some certain, certain things. So Lord, like, I want to go. So he said, okay, well then get back out there. Like, you know, you're fine. Go. So received that dream and that word from the Lord. And then Monday morning, I go to work for like maybe an hour. Body's still recuperating. You know, I'd done a bunch of tests. It was like, my numbers weren't great, but they were recovering, you know, oxygen level. And they were yeah. coming back up. I might've fudged some numbers when I told my wife, like, oh yeah, it's good. You know, but yeah. it might've been a little low, but it, Look, I was so convinced, like, the Lord's got me. Yeah. Like, it's fine. The Lord's yeah. got me. Word's starting to get out, you know. Well, actually, the crazy part of the story I forgot to mention was the day before this pool incident happened, I was texting my business partner and an acquaintance of ours, not like a friend, just somebody we knew had passed away from a, 
um, interesting medical condition. And my business partner was like, oh gosh, that brings so much fear on me. You know me, we have, we have a younger brother, older sister relationship. And I said, oh, I can't wait to die. Yeah, I know you're, you're ridiculous. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. What I meant to say yeah. is I cannot wait to meet Jesus. Yes. And that was literally on Friday afternoon at like four o'clock. And then Saturday afternoon was when I laid at the bottom of that pool. As Percy, my friend Percy likes to call it, I took a nap at the bottom of the pool, yeah. which I don't advise. Mm-hmm. And and just to clarify, yeah. like, as a nurse, yes, go for it. Um, you didn't hit your head. You didn't no. have a seizure. No. You did see a doctor, and he said yeah. that it was a shallow water blackout. blackout. That's yeah. what that's how they describe it: shallow water blackout. Okay, which I still don't understand quite. It, it, it imbalance the CO two and oxygen. You don't feel like you're going to pass out. Yeah, it's just you don't crazy. feel the urge to like get air. Yeah, and like you know, the crazy thing is about swimming underwater. I'll swim for periods underwater where the body wants to come up, but you can actually get past that and then just go stay under for like another full minute. You just got to be willing to kind of go past that. But that, I didn't even get to that point. Yeah. You know, it just kind of was one of those things. So I'm convinced after saying that to my friend or business partner that if I'd have seen Jesus in that room, I'm not coming back. I would have stayed. I mean, I would have been like, yeah, there's Jesus and I am going that way. Mm -hmm. But Lord, obviously people joke with me, you know, they're like, oh, you know, you showed up at the gates of heaven and God's like, oh my gosh, what's he doing here? Send that guy back now. Like. He's not supposed to be here. But now, you know, obviously God's sovereignty and prayer, he knows everything. So Tuesday rolls around. I'm in the gym. Tuesday morning, 5.30 a.m. I'm like, I'm going to kind of just go see these people. And my body was really struggling on this day to the point where my lungs were hurting the most they'd hurt. You know, kind of like a fever setting in, body just exhausted. And I did get a little fearful, like, hey, maybe I'm not good. Maybe I do need to go see a doctor. Maybe, like, you know, something is wrong, you know. And that's like, an athlete does this. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm talking to God, yeah. you know. Yes. And I went home at, like, you know, 6.30 in the morning, and I'm not a napper at all. I don't take naps. Unless it's beautiful, like a Saturday, like my youngest, you know, he can get me to lay down and take a nap with him. But I mean, I'm like, hey, babe, like, I'm not feeling great. I'm going to go upstairs and lie down. I think I'm going to lie down for like 30 minutes and be okay. And the best way to describe what happened on that Tuesday was God put me to sleep. And he just like, he had something to show me. And so I go into this sleep fearful. And like I said, I'm a, I'm a dreamer, but this wasn't a dream. This was very much a vision. Like I could feel, smell taste, see, you know, I could, it was, all my senses were engaged. I wasn't in my bed. I was in a place. And in this vision, there was two storm clouds and they're shaped like this. I'm at the bottom of them and they were shaped like this. And they were so big And the energy, the power, the fire, the lightning, the wind, the sound of the thunder was the most intense thing that I've ever ever experienced to the point where I was terrified, this storm. And I mean, the easiest way to describe it is like, you know, take a class five hurricane winds and multiply it by like, you know, hundred, take the sound of thunder and take two planets and collide them. Like that was the sound is so loud. And out of these storm clouds emerged these angels. They like literally just came out of the clouds. What I would perceive as angels, honestly, I've never seen a creature like this. There's nothing that I would be able to kind of reference other than, you know, wings and it was almost like an instrument in their mouth slash coming out of their mouth very intense creatures that also struck a lot of fear in me i'm like i'm in the wrong place right now and they start singing and i hear this song that i only like maybe heard once or twice and it was cody carnes firm foundation it's all about he won't fail he won't and every time the angels this rendition honestly it was wildly different, like wildly different as far as like energy and power that, that they were singing with. As they were singing, every time they said, he won't, talking about he won't fail, that he's successful, the thunder cracked and it was so loud and the lightning would just explode across the sky, fire just, I mean, it was so intense. And then at the top of the storm cloud emerged, I didn't see like, a full throne. I just saw like the outline 
of what, what I perceived as a throne. Radiant light coming from it. To be honest with you, it was calm there. Everywhere else was just chaos. At this point, I'm like, oh my goodness. I think I should just assume position like these angels and just start worshiping. So I got on my knees in this place and I just kind of head down and started singing with the angels. The third time the angels said, he won't, I snapped up. At this point, I'm in bed. It is perfectly sunny outside. I'm thinking somebody has a speaker on in my house because I still hear the angels singing. I still hear the thunder rolling. And so I get up, look at my phone, nothing's going on there. Throw my door open. Nobody's actually in the house. My wife left the house. She was like, you, you need some rest. And I go look out, bring the blinds open, and it's just perfect blue sky. So when I snapped up and kind of tried to get my senses back together, I heard the angels basically singing and the thunder rolling for about 10 seconds as I was fully awake and, and coherent of where I was in my house. And that just shook me to the core. And I just sat down. And at this point, I was like, felt like I was in just like this tunnel of just Holy Spirit. I was just, just so focused. And I said, Lord, what was that? What do you got to say? And he just, I mean, I, I, don't, I never heard God audibly, but you know, you get these impressions and you get this small voice in the back of your spirit, if you will. And Dave, raising people from the dead. That's not a tough thing for me. I can do that in my sleep, you know, even though God never slumbers nor sleeps. And he said, do you see that power? Did you see that storm, that energy, the wind, the fire, the lightning, the sound of the thunder? He said, that's my spirit. And he was like, that spirit resides in you. That spirit resides in, in my, my believers that believe in Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit that resides in us. So go in my name and in in, 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 go in the name of Jesus. Have no fear. There's nothing that can touch you when you're walking in this. There's nothing that can touch you. And obviously, you know, you want to proceed with caution in certain situations when you're dealing with maybe deliverance or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, there's nothing that can touch his reign and his control. I mean, absolutely nothing. And from that day forward, I was like, well, I almost feel like it's a cheat code now. I'm, I don't, it's like, hey, faith. No, I got to sit there in what I would perceive as God's throne room and, and one, be terrified, but also be in complete awe of the God that we serve. And you know what's interesting? A verse that, some verses that really stick out to me about this is, in John 16, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's like, guys, I got to go. He's like, but it is better that I go. John 16, he's like, it's better that I leave so I can send the helper. Like, first off, Jesus did the most unbelievable miracle on the face of the planet. There's nothing greater than Jesus' life, death, and the resurrection from the grave, right? And by putting our faith in him, our whole faith, we have salvation. So that alone is the greatest, greatest gift, miracle, ever. But what blows my mind about Jesus is that he doesn't stop with that. He just keeps giving. It's like, I was actually with some buddies last night and we were, we were going after God. There are some things that God's put on my heart, put on my buddy's heart. I said, guys, we just sit for an extended period of time and go after God, just worship, pray, not for just 30 minutes. We need to go after him. One of the words that God gave me is, be faithful, for I am always faithful. Try me. And it was like, oh, okay. Like, the Lord, he's not going to fail you. He's not going to throw you in a situation where he's not going to give you everything you need. It might be one word, but he's going to give it to you. And when you move into that place, one word, you know, he's going to then open it up and make you realize why he's there. And so what I love about it is, Let's see. Okay, I love this. So Jesus is talking about that I got to go. So it is to your advantage that I go away, for I do not go away. The helper will not come to you. So not only is he bless us with salvation, yeah, but then he's like, 
I'm going to give you my spirit, Holy Spirit. And it's like, okay, well, what's that going to do for us? For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine. Okay? So what is Jesus's? Everything. Yeah. He's creator of all. Yeah. I mean, creator of all of it, all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding. I mean, he holds everything in his hands, right? says, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So literally, not only the most amazing thing ever, because he give us salvation, we can stay there forever and be forever grateful. But he says, but I also am going to give you my spirit. And it's going to literally guide you into all truth. Everything that I have, he's going to make known to you. And that's, that is some incredible, incredible truth that, you know, it's an infinite amount of time to learn yeah, and grow. You know, you're talking about the infinitely wise creator. There's no limit to how much you will learn and grow as long as you're breathing. And so for me, when I wake up in the morning, after that whole incident and everything that kind of surrounded it and things that have continued to come from it, when I wake up and I consciously, you know, obviously I breathe into the night, but when I consciously take that breath, I'm like, all right, there's air in my lungs, which ultimately is the spirit of God. Yeah. In Genesis, it says that he breathed into our nostrils. He, he literally put his spirit in us. We're the only creature that he did that to. Mm -hmm. All the elements he spoke into existence. He breathed his spirit. He shared the, the heavenly father of the universe, shared his spirit with us to give us life. Yeah. So every time I breathe, I'm like, okay, Jesus, I'm awake. What do you got for me today? Let's, let's go have fun. Let's get, let's get after it. But there is going to be every day, there is an opportunity. There is a person. There is a situation that God will call you into. You may miss it. But if you're listening intently, you won't. Yeah. And it might be one simple thing. It doesn't have to be this crazy, extravagant healing somebody or whatever it may be. It might be a word that God puts on your heart. It might be a simple gesture that, the, that you have no idea how the Spirit of the Lord will drastically change the atmosphere of that individual's life. Because when they, just the slightest hint of God's presence, when they experience it or they are touched by it, there's freedom, there's joy. And sometimes they have no idea what they're being touched by. I mean, no idea. And, but God's word is faithful. And Isaiah talks about, it's like rain that when it hits the earth, it, you know, it doesn't just, just hit the earth and not draw forth like fruit. It plants grow. When his word penetrates our heart, it begins to do things to us. It begins to change us. It begins to draw us into his presence. So he's faithful. His word's faithful. And we have that ability to speak those words yeah. in some mighty, mighty ways. You just got to be willing to listen, go after it, relentlessly pursue it, understand that you're going to look different. If, if God calls you every single day, your life is just going to look different. Yeah. And people are going to question you and things of that nature. Jesus told us that was going to happen. It doesn't have to look insanely different either, though. I know plenty of people that exist in this world that, you know, you know, super high up business guys that are just dominating the business field, but they walk mightily in the spirit and they know the only way in which they receive wisdom in, in their pursuits is because the Lord gives it to them. So it's just like, there's so many different avenues that God's going to work in your life and just got to be willing to accept it. I would say this, you got to have open hands. For two reasons. You got to have open hands. For one, you don't want to be gripping something so tightly. Because there's things that God's going to say, hey, mm, I don't like that. Let's let that go. I mean, that's that's happening constantly, you know. Convicted so hard last night about something, you know. And then you also want to have open hands so you can receive. Yeah. Right? You don't want to have anything in your hands if God's trying to give you something. You don't want to I'll give it all. Okay. I want that. So you got to have these open hands and be willing to receive. I mean, in, in, in scripture, it talks about all throughout Acts, like, you know, 
It talks about the Holy Spirit. Just receive it. It's been given. Jesus yeah. said, I'm going to send you helper. So it's been given. Yeah. Just got to receive it. Yeah. You know, just receive it and watch what the Lord does with your life. You know? Well, I think it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, we chatted the other day on the phone and you talked about how if I got two hours here and there, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. God, send me. Like, and you're pursuing some mentoring right now sure. in specific areas. I think God, I really believe there is a mantle that might be getting passed to mm-hmm. you. That's just something I feel. Yeah. But I needed to hear this message today. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. Because right now, I think it's such an easy thing to, and we got to remember, we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Sure. Yeah. So I think it li- it uplifts me so much to think about the vision God gave you and even the combination of the message with the dream that you had and then the experience and to see you walking it out is a big inspiration for me. Well, I hope and pray that my faith in the Lord and my communion with God and my time in his word will translate into my everyday situation where when people have conversations, whatever they be, that just the spirit of God comes out. And it's not even something that obviously I'm not doing. I didn't put myself in the bottom pool. I didn't want to have a dream or I didn't want to have a vision. Like I wasn't asking for these. So I, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I want people to understand that. Like it's all God's grace. But I think the thing is people can experience God's grace, but are you willing to let it change you? Are you willing to say, wow, like one, view it for what it is, this unbelievable grace that we don't deserve. And my life is a countless picture of, I don't deserve, you know, to be where I'm at. But yet God puts this grace on me. It's like, I don't want to waste that. Like God, thank you. I love you. I don't want to waste that. So let that grace translate into a outward approach to my wife and my children and the people around me. And that's what I'm always gripped by is gifts of the spirit, more grace. And so you can hold on to it and have like a magic trick. It is always to edify the body of believers or to introduce somebody to Jesus. Yeah, That's what it is. It's not for you. It literally... Yeah. Is a place to say, okay, you gave me this gift. Now I've got to use it Yeah, for your kingdom, for the sanctification of others, for the edifying of others. And that's a responsibility. But, you know, I was reading a book. I used to think like, oh, you got to make all these sacrifices to follow God. So convicted by it. Because the quote near the end of the book was, it doesn't cost anything to follow God. It pays. And... The point this individual is making was, hey, walk your life without God. Watch what happens. You're going to find yourself in some really tough, dark places. But walk with God and watch the way in which he blesses you with his presence and his peace and his grace. I mean, it pays to follow God. It pays to give your life to God. Jesus was yelling that to, you know. Just if you want to follow me, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow me daily because it's going to pay out. Yeah. For eternity. Yes. You know, for eternity. So you may think like, oh, I got to change my life around. No, God will do that. Yeah. He'll, you give him your life. He's going to turn. He's going to pull things out of you that don't belong and you got to be willing to let it go. So don't think you got to turn your life around before you meet God because he's doing that. He's just going to continue to bless you. Well, I'm so grateful that you shared today. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad that you're still alive. I love the fire that you have in your spirit yeah. to just do the work and pursue him and all that he has through you. Mm. And uh, I know that there are a lot of people that are listening right now that there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of people that are fighting fear and discouragement and even hopelessness, mm. and they need this message. But I would love for you, if you would, to pray over those individuals right yeah. now. Would love to. Lord, you're king. You are king of all. You are creator of all things. Everything is in the palm of your hand. There's nothing outside of your scope. God, you are in control, even though sometimes we may say, eh, it doesn't look like it, but you you are. You're king. You're mighty. You're holy. You're righteous. You are perfect. 
judge. God, I, I praise you. I worship you. I thank you that you've poured your grace out on us and that we can move into that place of intimacy with you and peace with you and rest with you. And God, this world definitely, number one thing it tries to do, the enemy, casting fear. Thank you, Father, that we literally have everything we need to move into a place, even where our enemies may be seated before us, we can confidently sit there because of who you are and what you've supplied us with through your son, Jesus. So Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, that there is any fear that is reeling people right now, that is coming down on people and as I'm stuck, I just, I just, you know, since there's a multitude of people that, that they, they can't take a step right now, they don't want to take a step right now because one, they don't even know where to go. They're afraid they're going to take the wrong step. But two, they're believing a lie and don't believe that they can trust you in that step. And so I cast that spirit off, that spirit of fear off in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus it says that, that the demons shudder at the name of Jesus. So we come in the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we say, fear be gone. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. You must leave never to return from the people that you're speaking to right now. Because God, you have people on your heart. You have a deep calling on their life. You have a deep calling to step out. And in all throughout your word, you just chose simple people to do incredible things. David was tending the sheep, told to take some bread to the front lines to his brothers, and then he was thrusted into a battle with a giant. And he had such faith in the living God that he had no fear and he moved in. <laughs> and so, Father, there's a place that we can live in intimacy with you where fear doesn't riddle us and cripple us. Yeah, we're humans. There is going to be times where we stumble back into it. But I pray, Spirit, that you would churn in the souls of those that find themselves in a the place of fear and you would move them, you would encourage them, you would remind them of the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ and the, and the fact that Jesus left us with the helper, the Holy Spirit, that is going to deliver us into a place of deep communion with you, Jesus. And that, that, that this Spirit... The Holy Spirit is going to declare to us everything that is yours. And so we walk into a room that we might not belong. We might not feel like we're adequate to be in that room. We are. You are. Because the Spirit of God is with you. And the Spirit of God has knowledge and wisdom in every facet of this life. There's not a place that the wisdom of the Lord doesn't exist. Truth and wisdom starts with our Heavenly Father. So as you walk in those rooms and that fear tries to come on you, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Anybody can do it. Rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. Gosh, God, we thank you. Thank you for the grace that you've placed on us through your son, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you and give you all the praise. And in Jesus' mighty name, we lift this up. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for listening today. And I know you were blessed. I know I was too. So God bless. Mm -hmm.